All right, here we are, section uh, 1-5, the homework worksheet. Solving equations, what I'm going to use is the scrap paper because there's just not enough room on the actual uh, worksheet paper. So what do we got here? 5x plus 6 equal to 0. You're taught to, you need to solve for x. All right, before you can solve for x, you need to get 5x, that term by itself. So the inverse, to get rid of the add 6, we're going to do the inverse of adding 6. We're going to subtract 6. On the left side and the right side, minus a uh, positive and negative 6 cancel themselves out. You end up with 5x equal to 0 minus 6 is minus 6. What I tell students is a little faster way of doing this is this. 5x plus 6 equals 0. You want to negate it. Get rid of this add 6. Simply take the add 6 and bring it on to the other side of the equation. And when it's up hap what ends up happening is this positive 6, when it crosses over to the right side, becomes a negative. So in this instance, I've subtracted 6 here, got rid of that, and then subtracted 6 on the right side. Notice that this just looks exactly like that. All right, my last step here is to divide through by positive 5. Five's cancel, and I got a negative over a positive. My entire fraction is negative, negative 6 fifths. Let us see. Number 2, number 2. Yeah, negative 61 equal to 10x plus 9. What I tell students is we're going to try our best to keep the variables on the left side and constants on the right side. So all I want to do is just simply swap sides here just to make this look a little more natural or used to seeing. All right, I want to solve for x. Before I can get solve for x, I need to get 10x by itself. So what I'm going to do is take this positive 9 and bring it on to the other side of the equation. All right, so minus 61 was already there. The positive on the left ends up as a negative on the right. What I've actually done is subtracted 9 here and then subtracted 9 there, but I didn't need the little baby step. So I end up now with 10x equal to a negative and a negative combined is a negative. 61 and 9 more is 70. And last step here is to divide both sides by a positive 10. 10s cancel out. Uh, negative over positive is negative. 70 divided by 10 is 7. X is equal to a negative 7. Letter C. Letter C. Hold on a second here. Huh. Number 3. Move this around. Number three, I've got 7x plus 5 is equal to 3x minus 15. What I want to do is get my x's on the left-hand side and my constants on the right side. So what I want to do is bring that 3x to the left and bring the positive 5 to the right. So 7x is sitting there. Here comes a positive. It's a positive on the right side. Ends up as a negative on the left. Equal to a negative 15. This positive 5 on the left side. Bring it over to the right. Change the signs. So what I've actually done is to subtract 3x on both sides. And then subtract 5 on both sides. A little faster way of doing it. Instead of writing subtract 5 here. Subtract 5 there. Subtract 3x here and 3x on the other side. Just... Swap sides. Variables on the left, constants on the right. When it crosses the equal sign, just simply change the sign. 7x minus 3x, that's 4x. A negative combined with a negative is a negative 15, and 5 more is 20. Last step is to divide both sides by 4. Fourths cancel out. x is equal to signs are unlike. My quotient is negative 20 divided by 4 is 5. Negative 5. Let us see. All right. All right, four's a little more complicated, not a heck of a lot. Just going to do some setup work. Three times quantity, 2x plus 1 equal to 2 times x plus 1. Three times 2x. Three times 2 is 6 times x is 6x. Three times a positive one is a positive three. Three times two x, six x. Three times a positive one, positive three. 
Likewise, 2 times x on the right side is 2x. 2 times a positive 1 is a positive 2, distributing. All right, what I want to do now is to bring the 2x to the left and the positive 3 to the right. All right, so I'm just going to swap. So I'm going to rewrite this. I want to bring this to the left and the positive 3 to the right. So 6x is already on the left side. The positive 2x ends up on the left side as a minus. 2 is already there. The positive 3 crosses over. It changes signs. So what I've done here is subtract 3 on both sides to get rid of that. Then I subtracted 2x on both, on both sides. Got rid of the 2x. 6x minus 2x, 4x. 2 minus 3 signs are unlike differences. 1 take the sign of the larger, which is a 3, so it's a negative. And the last step here is to divide both sides by 4. x equal to a negative, negative 1 fourth, number 4, negative 1 fourth, letter B. 5 gets back to pre-simplistic. Um, 6 plus 7x. I'm going to write that as 7x plus 6. All right. 6 plus 7x. I'm going to write that as 7x plus 6. Just put the variable first. Equal to 0. All right. I'm going to take the 6 that's on the left side, bring it over to the right side. It's positive here. Ends up as a negative on the other side. I basically subtracted 6 here and subtracted 6 there. And the last step is simply divide by 7 on both sides. The entire fraction is negative, negative six sevenths, letter C, number five, letter C. All right, fractions, everybody's friend, fractions, everybody's buddy. Let me just move this up just a tad. All right, number six. Uh, one fifth of x minus one equal to one third of x minus five. Best way to deal with fractions is to deal with them right in the very first step. And which it's not the numerators that bother us; it's the denominators. So what I'm going to need to do is to find the lowest common denominator for five and three. Well, five times three is fifteen. I'm going to take fifteen and multiply it times both sides of the equation. All right, so it's 15, I'm going to spell this out. It's 15 times a 1 fifth x minus 15 times a minus, 15 times a 1, all right? The minus sign is there, all right? So it's minus and then 15 times 1 equal to 15 times 1 third x minus 15 times 5, all right? So I've dealt with that minus sign right there. I've dealt with that minus sign right there. Cancellation, 5 into itself once. 3 times 1 times x is 3x. 15 minus 15 times 1 is 15. 3 into itself once. 3 into 15, 5 times. 5 times 1 is 5 times x is 5x. Minus times positive is negative. 15 times 5 is 75. Now, once again, I'm just going to swap sides. I'm going to bring this to the left side and bring the minus 15 to the right side. All right, the positive, positive here it ends up on the other side as a negative. There's my minus 75 that's already on the right side. The minus 15 comes over to the right side. It's minus on the left, changes sign. So I have added 15 on both sides. 3x minus 5x, the signs are unlike. Difference is 2. Take the sign of the larger one, the 5, negative. A negative and a positive. Signs are unlike. Difference is 60. Take the sign of the larger of the 2 which is the 75. My last step is to divide both sides by minus 2. Minus 2 is canceled. Signs are the same. My product, my quotient is positive. 60 divided by 2, that's 30. And what's great about this, you can go back and obviously check this. You know, you can say to yourself, is 1 fifth times 30 minus 1, is that equal to the same thing? as one-third of my solution was 30 minus 5. One-fifth of 30 is 6 minus 1. Is that the same? One-third of 30 is 10. 6 minus 1 is 5. 10 minus 5 is 5. 5 equals 5. What that tells you is that you've got the right solution. All right? The 
check works out, which is kind of nice. You check your work. So, number six was letter D, it was 30. All right, sometimes with these examples, and especially this section, it's kind of, you look at the problem here, and you kind of say to yourself, boy, the right side and left side look pretty much the same. You got one-third, uh, one-fifth, well, now I take that back. Now, uh, no, I take, yeah, all right, now we're doing number seven. So I got a minus 6x plus 8. I got a minus 6x. That's understood to be a plus 8. These equations are exactly the same. I mean, if I write these down, now if I just do this on this right side, if I just swap, all right, put the minus 6x first. This is understood to be a positive. These guys are exactly the same. And what that happens when you have the exact same equation, You've got all real numbers. No matter what you put in for x here, you're going to put in for x there. These are exactly the same. Any real number will, will suffice. If you were solving this, all right, if you were solving, if you go back to the original equation, you know, I would bring this on to the other side here. All right, I'd have minus 6x. It's minus there, so it's positive on the left side. Uh, plus 8 equals 8. The 6x's would cancel out, and you have a situation where 8 equals 8. Well, that's always true. When that happens, any real number will be a solution. If I had 8 equal to any other number, then there would be no solution to this problem. All real numbers, these equations are exactly the same. Any number you put here, you'll put there, and guess what? It'll be the same because the equations are exactly the same. Not an issue. Not an issue. You know, let me skip down to number 9 for a moment. Notice the difference in 9. You've got a minus 10y and a minus 10y. So if I added 10y on both sides, the y's would cancel out, and I'd have a situation where 7 equal to negative 5. All right, now, here we go. Let me just write this. Number 9. Minus 10y plus 7 equals a minus 5. Uh, minus 10y. Let me just take this minus 10y and bring it on the other side. It's minus here. It ends as a, a positive. All right, so that's over. Now, this is no longer here. All that's left is that minus 5. A minus and a positive 10y would cancel out. You have 7 equal to negative 5. Well, that never happens. That can never happen. When this situation arises, all right, unlike the previous one, number 7, where you had 8 equal to 8, this never happens. It can't happen. What that tells me is that there are no solutions. Number nine, there are no solutions because obviously seven and negative five. But if you looked at this, these guys are the same, but these numbers are different. Seven is never going to equal negative five. No solution. All right, number uh, number eight. You got nine halves. Number eight, nine halves of y plus 4 equal to 5 twelfths. What I want to do is to negate the denominators. I can do that by finding the lowest common denominator. Well, the lowest common denominator for 2 and 12 is 12. I'm going to multiply the left side by 12 and the right side by 12. All right, so I have 12 times 9 halves y plus 12, multiplying 12 times both the terms, distributive property, 12 times a positive 4. These guys are going to cancel out, just giving me 5. 2 into itself once, 2 into 12, 6 times, 6 times 9 is 54, times y is 54y, plus 48 is equal to 5. I'm going to take the 48, bring it on to the other side of the equation here. 54y equals 5 minus 48. 54y equals a negative. Let's see, signs are alike. Difference is 43. Take the sign of the larger one. And I'm going to divide both sides by, let me go up here. What have I got? 54y is equal to a minus 43. I'm going to divide both sides by 54. 54 will cancel out, and y is negative over positive is negative. 43 50 fourths. 43 50 fourths negative. 
letter D, and this is number eight. Yeah, signs. Notice here how he's trying to, you know, he's trying to play games with you. There's a correct fraction, but it's positive. Your answer, because of a negative divided by a positive, your quotient is negative. Letter D. Letter D. All right. Oh joy, a lot of fractions, but we'll deal with it. We shall deal with number 10. If I come down here a little bit. If I can give you a word of advice, it's just taking your time doing one operation per line. You start to get to a situation, you try to do multiple things at once, that's when mistakes happen. All right, and here again, in the previous example, I could have gone back and checked that one. All right, just to be sure that you got the right answer. You know, a sign you've got the wrong answer. If you do it, and your solution is one of the four answers, well, you know you did something wrong. But it's not a bad idea to check examples. A little time-consuming, but guaranteeing yourself of a right answer. One-tenth X plus one-eighth. All right, I got a bunch of denominators. I got four of them here. All right. In fact, I can write a better eight than that. So, here's the, here's the trick. Take the largest of your denominators, 10. All right, five goes into 10, four goes into 10, eight can't go into 10. The next multiple of 10 is 20. Eight still can't go into 20. Three times 10 is 30. Eight still can't go into 30. 4 times 10 is 40. 5 goes into 40, 4 goes into 40, 8 will go into 40. So my lowest common denominator is 40. So it's 40 times the left side. In fact, let me write it this way. I'm kind of not following my own advice. I'm doing kind of two steps in, two steps in one. So let me just slow my roll and 40 times the right side. All right, so now I will distribute the 40 times both the terms within the parenthesis. So 40, and I'll put this in another parenthesis, plus 40 times the fraction 1 fourth, equal to 40 times 1 tenth x, plus, plus the 40 times the 1 eighth, distributing the 40 times both terms in the parenthesis. All right, cancellation, 5 into itself, 5 into 40, 8 times, 8 times 3 is 24, times x is 24x, 4 into itself once, 4 into 10, so it's 4 into 40, 10 times, 10 times 1, that's a positive 10. Cancellation, 10 into itself once, 10 to 40, 4 times, 4 times 1 times x, 4x, 8 into itself once, it's a positive by the way, 8 into 40, 5 times, 5 times 1, that's 5. Okay, we cleared out all those denominators. And now I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to bring a 4x to the left and a positive 10 to the right. This to the left and that to the right. All right, so this 4x is positive on the right side. And when I cross the equal sign, I'm subtracting 4x. The 5 is already waiting there. The positive 10 goes over to the other side as a negative. I'm subtracting 10 here and subtracting 10 there. Faster way of doing it. 24x subtract 4x. That's 20x. Positive 5 combined with a negative 10 is a negative 5. And the last step is to divide both sides by 20. And x is equal to... Negative over positive signs are like quotient is negative. 5 divided by 20 is 1 fourth the lowest terms. 5 into itself once, 5 into 24 times. Uh, negative 1 quarter. It's always a nice thing um, when you see that your answer, your answer is there. Okay. He was right. I suggest if you do it and your answer is not there, you could go back to the same problem, but you have a tendency to make the same mistake. My suggestion is you start the problem from scratch. Boy, these guys look the same. Look at this. Negative 4 sevenths, negative 4 sevenths x. Positive 20 and a positive 20. The left side 
and the right side are exactly the same. That tells me that all real numbers are the same. Without doing any work, just kind of look at it. If I had had a 20 here, and as I say, any other number than 20, then my answer would have been no solution. All right, minus 4 7 minus 4 7 x. These guys are exactly the same equation, which means all real numbers will work. All right. Number 12. Back to fractions again. Negative 1 8 x plus 6 equal to 9 fourths. All right, so lowest common denominator for 8 and 4 is 8. So I'm going to multiply 8 times the left side of the equation and 8 times the right side of the equation. And I'm going to spell it out. It's 8 times this first term. 8 times a negative 1 8 x plus 8 times 6. 8 times 6 equal to cancellation here. 4 into itself once 4 goes to 8 twice. 2 times 9, that's 18. Uh, positive times negative, my product is negative, 8 into itself once, 8 into itself once, 1 times 1 is, 1 times 1 is 1 times x is just that, x, 8 sixes are 48, alright, so what I want to do is to bring the 48, get rid of that, moving on to the other side of the equation, so a negative x would be equal to 18, if it's positive on the left side, ends up on the other side as a negative, Negative x is equal to, signs are unlike, difference is 30, and it's negative because 48 is bigger than 18. I don't want to know what negative x is, I want to know what positive x is. So if negative x is negative 30, then positive x is positive 30. I multiply both sides by a negative 1 here. Alright, I don't want to know what negative x is, I want to know what positive x is. So if negative x is negative 30, then positive x is positive 30. Right. Here we can, let's say you had negative x equal to 15. And if I multiply both sides by a negative 1, positive x would be a negative 15. All right? Multiplying both sides. You're solving for positive x, not for negative x. Anyways, getting back to number 12. The correct answer was 30. Letter A. Letter A. And notice how he plays games here. He's thinking you're going to mess up the signs. And that's a lot of algebra. It's signs. All right. So we had 30 both answers, but your answer. A negative x was negative 30, which means a positive x is a positive 30. Multiplying both sides by negative 1. You're solving for positive x, not for negative x. All right. Find the zero, all right? Zero is like finding the x-intercept, all right? Finding a zero here, f of x equal to x plus 9. You're finding a zero, so replacing. Just remember now, this is a f of x and y are one and the same. So on the, you're finding a zero, you're finding the x-intercept. Any value on the x-axis has a y value of 0. So what I'm doing, if I find the 0 in place of f of x, I'm substituting in 0. I'm not putting 0 here and solving for 0. I'm, I'm setting the equation off equal to 0. Now if you want, you can just flop sides here and then bring the positive 9 off to the other side. If it's positive on the left, it ends up as a negative on the right. x is equal to a negative 9. Alright, notice if you substitute negative 9, negative 9 plus 9 would be 0. Negative 9. Letter C, 13. Letter C. So these are real easy equations to solve. You get number uh, 14. F of X is equal to 13 minus X. So if I'm solving for the 0, I'm not evaluating at zero. I'm solving for the zero. I'm looking for the x-intercept. Back here, this previous one, if I were to graph this line, all right, if I were to graph this line, it'd have an x-intercept of a negative 9. All right, so here's negative 9. It'd be slanting like this, going through negative 9. In fact, my y-intercept is positive 9. That's what that line would look like if you were to graph it. 
Here is the zero, negative nine. The zero and the x-intercept are one and the same. All right, number uh, 14. Um, I'm solving for the zero. All right, so in place of f of x, which is a y value, I'm putting in zero equal 13 minus x. And if I flop sides here, in fact, why don't I rewrite this as, all right, 13 minus x equals zero. Interchanging these two terms, negative x plus 13 equals zero. Let me take the 13 and subtract 13 on both sides. Negative x equals, if it's positive on the left, negative on the right. Subtracting 13 and subtracting 13. If negative x equals negative 13, positive x equals positive 13. Multiplying both sides by a negative 1. And check it out. 13 sub subtract. 13 subtract. 13 is 0. All right. So 13 for number 14. Number 15. f of x equal to a negative 4x plus 5, 0 equal to a negative 4x plus 5. Interchanging sides, flopping sides, minus 4x. I just do this because it's, it's more convenient. It's something that you're used to seeing. The, yeah, the variable is on the left side versus the right side. I'm going to bring the 5 over. It's positive here. It ends up on the right side as a negative. And the inverse of multiplication by negative 4 is division by negative 4. Negative 4s cancel out. Signs are the same. My quotient is positive. Positive 5 fourths. And this was, what, 15? Positive 5 fourths. Letter G. Number 16. F of x equal to 5 minus 11x, 0 equal, I'm solving for the 0, or the x-intercept, I want to flop sides again, just simply rewrite this, the right side on the left, and the left side on the right, um, take the 5, bring it onto the other side of the equation, a little faster than subtracting 5 and putting subtract 5, you just save this little subtract 5 step here. Positive here ends up as a minus. What I did, I subtracted 5 here. These guys went away, and then 0 minus 5 is a minus 5, all right? Dividing both sides by a negative 11. These guys cancel out. And x is equal to, once again, signs are the same, so my quotient is positive, positive 5 elevenths. And it's nice, it's right here, number letter A. Letter A, 17. I guess I could do 17 right on the sheet here. F of X equals 22 minus X. I'm solving for the zero. So in place of X, F of X, I put in zero. Notice so I didn't put a zero here. I set this whole thing off equal to zero. I'm going to flip sides, 22 minus x equals 0, or negative x plus 22 equals 0. Take the 22 and bring it on to the other side. It's positive here, it ends up as a negative. I subtracted 22 and subtracted 22. If a negative x is negative 22, a positive x is a positive 22, multiplying both sides by a negative 1. You're solving for x, not for negative x. 22, letter A, 17A. That's good when the answer is there. I like that one. All right, the remaining, that was what, 18, that was 17. So 18, 19, and 20. So they're all graphs. What is he asking me to do? Find the x-intercept and the zero. Well, the x-intercept here is you know, four places to the right, four, zero. All right, four, zero, right there. Which means that the <laughs> the zero is four. The zero is the x value, which has a y value of zero. It's the x intercept. All right, there it is, four. But as long as I know four zero, I'm all set here. 
Here, number 19, this is where the line cuts across the x-axis. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Negative 3. I can do a better job. Negative 3, comma, 0. Negative 3, comma, 0. And there it is, minus 3. It's just going to be my x value. I don't know where he's getting that one from. All right. The y value will always be 0 on an x-intercept because it's on the x-axis. Anything on the x-axis, you're not going up or down, it's 0. Let us see. This was letter D. And the last one, what's the x-intercept right here? That's where the line cuts across the x-axis. Where is that? 1, 2, 3. 3, 0. Where do I see 3, 0? I see it right here. And notice that the... Uh, X value is 3. That's the the 0 of the function. 3, 0. It's all easy enough. Where's the line cut across the x-axis? All right. The 0 and the x-intercept are one and the same. 3, 0. Right there. Let us see. All right. That is that.